the fine house we had tonight, Abel. Let's hope it keeps up all season. You're right, Max. I'm glad to know that there are people who still like good music instead of that boop to boop and hot car business we hear every day. <laughs> that sounds like you've got a radio in the house. I heard. And put it on too. <laughs> <laughs> you play that radio so loud? Uh, okay, okay. Every time you come in, I've got to turn the radio off. If you wanted it just for an ornament, you could have saved yourself some money and bought a hat rack. That's the way to go. Doesn't your father like to see you enjoy yourself? Always. Oh. Music is good for everyone. But for the love of sake, such discord as you listen to, here, here is real music.
you quite a lot, doesn't it? Look in the desk and get me my bank statement. Read me the balance. Why, it's only fifty-two dollars. What? Oh, yes, I remember. I had five hundred dollars. I bought a new violin. And I loaned Rodinsky, a shallow player who's out of work, fifty dollars. A fine lot of consideration you have for Paul and me. Here you are almost penniless because you must buy violins and help out hand musicians. Now your hand is injured, you can't go to work, and yet you say everything's going to be all right? Sure. Why not? Even if I'm laid up longer than I think, surely you and Paul can help out by going to work. Yeah, what kind of work? Paul ain't the type, and I can't find anything that suits me. It's your fault, too. You never let me go out and do what I wanted to. I always had to stay home and listen to that crazy music of yours. Well, if you're going to talk like that, I think I'll go to bed.
tell Paula. I want to see her when she comes in. Pennsylvania, six, five, six hundred. Uh, give me Pennsylvania, six, five, six hundred. Uh, what time can I get a train to Atlantic City at night? Eleven forty. Thanks. Paula, gone. And the little too. Well, Mr. Green, the final bandit. Now we can see how you've mended that. And send the finger. Tell me, what's the matter? Quick! Exercises probably limber them to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. The fingers will always be semi paralyzed. The tendons are tightened as they heal. Oh, this can't be done. I don't have to play the lace and then try to mark a knife, maybe to be all right. Eh? Then I can play my solo. The disappointment will only be more intense if I promise the false You will never play well again. If at all. I know how you feel, Mr. Green, but you must try to overcome your grief. Your health won't permit such despondency. Isn't there someone who can help you, a friend, or your family? Family? I have family. Yes. But they're okay now. I'll be all right. I'm not so sure about that. You really should.
shouldn't be left alone. Well, I'll manage somehow. You see, Doctor, I'm not alone. I still have my music. Remember, you are playing as it was, not as it is now. I had to try. And now, I want to ask you a favor. Anything in my power, I know. I know I can't play anymore. But isn't there something else I could do? As a manager, you do the hiring. Perhaps I could help arrange the score, take charge of the library. Anything you do. I wonder why we always must disappoint our friends with the leader. You ask me something, I would give you in a second if I could. With Adolf, I can. There are no vacancies. I cannot throw men deliberately out of work, even if I wanted to. Perhaps later we find a place. Yeah. Perhaps I'll find something else. I am sure you can. Just on your reputation. And in the meantime, I'm oh. going to accept this just as a loan from the officer and myself. You men see me. I appreciate that. I shouldn't. Yeah. I'm not worried. My family, you know, they won't let me want for anything. Uh, Adolf, your face is as beautiful as your music. Don't ever lose either. My music is my thing. Nice day for Adolf. The society, Connor. That holds your news for me. Me neither. Yeah. Thanks. Good night. Good night.
drumming on the piano. You did. I sent him to bed. Noise is enough to drive anybody crazy. To bed? Wait. You mean to say you sent Carl off without letting me say goodnight to him? What? He's not old enough to understand you anyway. But you are. Paula, you're about as selfish and shallow as anyone could be. That isn't the opinion you expressed when I was unavailable. Naturally. I only knew a false charm, a less intimate side of you then. At that time, you still had a husband to acquire. That's merely a crude way of boasting about yourself. Candidly, I may be as disappointed as you are. I'm young and you're, well, uninteresting. I see no reason for showing a charm and happiness I don't feel. Are you going to the concert this evening? Yes, worth luck. Too late to stop the clock from calling for us now. Well, at any rate, their presence will guarantee a pleasant evening. Yes. I talked to him at lunch at the club today. Seems that Mrs. Clark is thinking of filing suit for divorce. I've never seen him in such high spirits before. You come to my house tonight, eh? And my daughter Carmen will have on the first two on the table will make the mouth glad to open. <laughs> <laughs> Not tonight, Rosine. I'm too tired. Oh, tired. You come to my house, you don't want to be tired. Because you know why? You always have plenty good fun. And you have... Oh, no. Poor man. He's a musician, too. Good. He lives for a He or me. It's a hero. Good head. Here with us. All 
you get up town is the noise of the street cars and peddlers. Down here we have nothing but music. Except when your friend plays the saxophone upstairs. He says the same thing about your trombone playing. <laughs> How would you like to stay down here with Rosine tonight? You look very tired, Hilda. And tomorrow we could spend the day together with our music. Eh? No, why you no sleep down here tonight? I got plenty room. Come on, I show you. Well, I am a little tired. And if I can stay here, I think I'll go to bed now. Huh? Good night, Adolf. And we see you tomorrow. Sure, we see him tomorrow. You know, I wear the night shirts. You'll find them in the drawer. They're better than pajamas. More room and no fun. <laughs> Good night, Good night. <laughs> you know something? I don't think he's got a home. Neither do I. I've heard that he played on the street for coins and often came to stand before the concert hall. But until tonight, I never was able to find him after the concert. Poor fellow. His music and memory made him come here. And then his pride would make him leave before we could see him. How awful. Daddy, I've often heard you say what a fine musician he is. Can't we do something to help him? My dear girl is very proud. You would be insulted if he did himself. And you know he can't make music with his bad hand. If we only could think of a business proposition for him. I have it. Listen. Let me see the obi below us here. Yes, I'm sure. Oh, why not set him up as a violin teacher? He wouldn't have to play much himself, and I'm sure we could find some pupils. Two of the children, Daddy, teaches the trombone, too. It's an idea. Oh, it's great. Practically perfect. I'm sure he would accept it if he thought he would pay us back. You know, as a business proposition, not as a charity. I go to donate this frock coat and three music men. I'll hang his drink and make his coffee. And I sponsor him personally. We start tomorrow. To the Greek music school. To the Greek music school. Young man, you will never learn to play the violin by looking out the window. Come to me, Because grandmother went and got this violin for a lot of soap wrappers she'd saved up. Master Reedy for becoming a musician. All right, that's all for today. Thanks, Mr. Green. But remember, I'm on the here improvement by next Monday. Oh, I'll practice high, Mr. Green. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Wait, you know, look where I'm going, eh? Pupil seems anxious to leave. Uh, what a life with those children. Their mind seems only on the clock. Ah, you've only had eight years of it. Think of the lifetime I have suffered with those kids, and their heads are full of awful thoughts. Mm -hmm. With the movies and the radio, they have no time for real work. Yeah, how many pupils do you have now? Who does it? I had one more, but he's now in the form school. Say, how do you get your pupils to practice? Mine pay no attention to me. You see, the trombone is a grand horn. And the harder you blow, the louder she is. <laughs> so I say to my pupils, you know, as all children love a noise, blow hard, because someone will hear and say, there's a musician. He can't miss. A you know, they practice so much, they go deaf from their own noise. So is everybody else. <laughs> when you give lessons, it sounds like a boiler factory. Oh, that's so. You don't think that Rosini is a great musician, eh? No. Well, I tell you something. Once I sail to South America for a concert tour, it is big Bob Gomez me. Who do you think sings the ship? I don't know. Who? Me, Rosini. The captain, he comes to me for parole. He says, Rosini, go on the bridge. And play your trombone till the fog gig away. Could a violin be so tremendous? No. But a foghorn could. 
well, of course. This I love too. <laughs> Uh, say, where is your father? I'll give you a date off, I guess. Let's say she's exercise. Ah, <laughs> uh, that ain't off. He's a great old fellow. You know, he's forgotten more about music than most people will ever. Yes, sir. I've grown very fond of him. For many reasons. It uh, wouldn't be because he lets us meet in the studio, would it? Maybe. You better go upstairs before father comes in for lunch. Uh, what do you do here, Paco? Hmm? Or spaghetti. Hey, that's a swell title for a song. But uh, I'll try it out first now. I want you to put the B on that husband of yours. I'm in a spot. Aren't we all, dear brother? I'm having troubles of my own. I just read an ad in the paper. Adolf Reed, professor of violin and cello. He said he killed two people. Why not go and see father? He's doing well, and you always were his fair-haired boy. Carl. Yes, ma'am. We won't need your services any longer. You may go. What's the matter, Mother? Professor Heinrich is a good teacher. Your father allows you to have these teachers, but he doesn't have to stay here and listen to them. I'm sorry. I thought everybody liked music. You're your grandfather all over again. My grandfather? Well, what do you mean? And why haven't I ever seen him? It's impolite to ask questions. And Carl, I want you to forget all about music. It reminds me of something that I myself want to forget. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me for being so long at the telephone. Now we begin the lesson. Today we play Rubenstein's Melody in F. I show you how it goes. No chewing gum, please. Yeah. 
hear you all the stuff, get him! Get out! After I get into the system! Boy, what a melody! I can see the old boys downstairs started. Say, wait here. I'm going down and uh, compliment Rosine. That'll be all for today.
have to get to the news. Uh-huh. Where have you been? Steve, you tell you where I haven't been. Are you in business? Well, uh, right now I'm looking over the field. I'm uh, a sort of a promoter. Promoter? Yeah. I develop angles. Work out little money-making details. I knew you'd make good someday. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down here and tell your father all about it. Tell me, what are you promoting? Well, I've got something big coming up. Yes? I saw your music school ad in the paper. Thought I'd sort of drop around and use your place for an address. Uh-huh. You know, a man like me needs a good, respectable setup. Mm-hmm. Besides, you and I could see more of each other than we have. Uh-huh. Well, you know, my boy. My home is always here. Eight years I've had this music school. I have made much money, but it's a living, and you can pay it as long as you like. <laughs> well, we're going to get along just fine. <laughs> I tell you, I got a big deal on in Chicago. Hmm? Yeah, tied up most of my capital for a while. It's so much fun. I was wondering if uh, you could lend me a little money for a while. I want to go uptown tomorrow and look over the field. Of course. Edna? Sure. I'll let you know if I need any more. That's all right. Now I'll tell you what, you sit here, and I'll make some leader con sandwiches and get some beer, and then you'll have a nice little talk, eh? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? You know, I was just thinking. The last time we were going to have beer and sandwiches, Well, don't worry, Pop. I might be ten years late for that date. But I'll wait this time. <laughs> Good morning, Richard. Oh, hello, Pop. Good morning, Mr. Zini. I was the most beautiful daughter of the world's finest trombonist. I'm glad you appreciate my father's ability, Mr. Green. Oh, excuse me. While I read my mail. Good morning. I can't understand why Richard gets so much mail. Perhaps there's some admirers. What? Nothing. Richard makes a lot of money, doesn't he? Well, he doesn't tell me much. He has an office of town where he promotes things. He's a smart boy, Tommy. I'm glad you're proud of him. You deserve a lot of happiness. Here comes one of my pupils. Good morning, Sidney. Good morning, Sidney. I'll leave you two for the mysteries of the violin. <laughs> Come in, Sidney. Well, Sidney, did you practice hard this week? Uh, no, sir, I didn't. Uh, you see, sir, my dog gave it half the music, so I could only say the bottom of the page. <laughs> That's the first time I ever heard that one. Never mind, the lesson you come in. Yeah? Yes. Excuse me. Just on your mind, boy. You read that ad and mailed it to you, didn't you? You saw it? 
thought we'd like to get a piece of your business. You're a violin manufacturer. I don't need any violins. I have plenty of them. You could buy an invitation? Well, I thought you did not use it. Mind your own business. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'm not interested in anything you have to offer. No? Maybe you will be when we get you down the pen. Why, Richard, what does all this mean? You guys are crazy. You're the guy that's crazy, using the mail to be fraud. Well, there must be some mistake. Why, what has Richard done? You ought to know. Why, he sent letters to mailing lists and has received money for services and merchandise which your music school was to deliver. Now, we hold a warrant for his arrest and enough complaints to put him on ice for years. For all we know, you're as guilty as he is. Ah, lay off. My old man's got nothing to do with it. He's just a musician, but he's not in on my swan song. Richard, what? Ah, uh, play it on your violin. Well, what are you waiting for? I'm the guy you want, ain't I? Yeah, come on. Well, you... It's all right, Pop. We're not pinching you. Funny a nice old guy like you to have a son like that. Well... Those at the break. So long. Your morning tape, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, what's this? Richard Grigg, brother-in-law of Michael Rupert, prominent manufacturer, was yesterday arrested by federal authorities on a charge of using the mails to defraud in a get-rich-quick scheme. Well, that just about breaks the camel's back. I'm sorry. Can I help what my brother does? What's the matter, Daddy? Carl, will you leave the room, please? I want to talk to your mother. Excuse me, Mother. I don't want to separate. I think you will when I tell you a financial settlement goes with it. Oh. James might do me good at that. Perhaps your ideas are the same as mine. What's your proposition? I keep Carl. You get $50,000 cash. Well, you are not very high. Maybe $100,000. 75 Remember, you're to stay away from Corbett. That won't be difficult. You've been a non-congenial wife and a disinterested mother for years. Save your compliments. Is this final? My lawyer will draw up the paper immediately. You get the cash, I keep talking. Mary? I'm going away on an extended business trip. I'm leaving him completely in your care. Be good to him now. Give him lots of those cookies, you know, you used to give me when I was a boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't you worry. Your old nurse knew how to make a good man out of you. <laughs> Carl and I, we will get along fine together. Won't we, Carl? Yes, Mary. <laughs> you see, Dad, I wish you didn't have to go away. Well, I feel the same way, son. But after all, it's a business. I'll write you off. And mind, mind you behave. Yes, sir. <laughs> now then. You run along because I want to talk to Matt. Yes, those cookies we just talked about. It's in the kitchen on the left shelf. Go ahead. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye. I may be gone quite some time, Mary. That's why I've closed my house and moved Carl down here with you. Mary, I want you to be a mother. Of course, you know that my wife and I have separated. That's why he needs a good woman's care more than ever. You understand? He will be a good company for an old woman like you. Don't worry about anything. God bless you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, young man. I know all about your father, but I don't know nothing about you. So tell me. Tell me everything. First, I like these kisses a lot. Ooh! <laughs> That's a good beginning. And I think I like living down here. Mm -hmm. Cold and funny looking. <laughs> Just like hot flip. I stand going on 11. I like music. I put the violin on the piano. Oh, that's fine. Music is good for everybody. You play that? My music teacher said I play very well. But my mother always made me stop. Just noise. So, when do you attempt to that? To 
tomorrow we will get a new music master. And he will find out for sure. And I knew a fine one. Just for the vine. See, really? I think I like you know what. <laughs> My favorite. How you played it beautifully. My boy, you have the feeling and ability to become a great musician. And maybe someday old Adolf will make you famous. But it means work. Hard work.
That boy has a world of talent. You are absolutely right. His technique is superb. All the aid or degree deserves all the credit for training him. Uh, chairman of the Symphony Society, I'm going to recommend that we have that boy appear as soloist on one of your future concert programs. I thought you wanted talent. What the future of fame and wealth that lasts in town. Oh, here he comes now, he's Aloy. Mother! Carl, oh, darling! Oh, oh. And Father, well, what a reunion! What did he call you? Well, he called me Mother. Carl's your grandson. Is that the big, my grandfather? God, if I had my choice, you're just the one I'd pick. Oh, oh. oh I can hardly believe it. For two years, day after day, I have been with my own grandson and didn't even know it. He didn't care. You can blame Michael for that. He stole Carl from me and put him with an old nurse. Well, I didn't know where he was. I haven't seen him until now. Carl, darling. My daughter. My grandson. All in one day. It is always too much for an old man like me. Congratulations to both. Getting a grandfather and a great music teacher. Now that I know your relationship, I understand where your genius comes from. Oh, man, see I just told Mr. Mancini to engage you as soloist for a coming cut of the Cosmopolitan Symphony Orchestra. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, sir. Bad enough. Mr. Rogers and I will go now and arrange all the details. Oh. Oh. Did you hear what they said? I'm so happy, Grandpa. Now I know I did everything you asked and said it so hard. Um, on you, I guess. Oh, you're not going to play that. You're coming home with Mother, and we're going to Europe where you can have the best training before you make public appearance. But Mother! But Mother, you can't do this. Remember, he's 19. He's my grandson. My protege. I heard them say what Charles' future will be, and he will not appear until he's been fooled by the best master. So many careers have been ruined by hate. After all, I have as much interest in his success as you have. Come along, Carl. You can see your grandfather later. Please, Carl. Don't take Carl away from me. You'll see him again before we leave New York. Come on, Carl. Come on, dear. Sorry, I'm late, Paula. Can we grab a cocktail? All a terrible mess, particularly for poor Adolf. Yes. She tried to take Carl to Europe, but the husband stopped her. Well, what if her husband does win Carl? Adolf still loses. The papers say the father disapproves of a musical career for the boy. It's useless to think that Carl will play now. I've already engaged a substitute artist. Well, it's certainly a rotten break for old Adolf. He's always helping other people, and yet every wish he has is a disappointment. True. Only yesterday he argued father into letting us become engaged. You can't tell me anything about him. He never struck a false note in all his life. The judge will announce his verdict today in his chamber. There's nothing we can do. After careful consideration of the testimony, the argument of counsel presented in the case of Paula Rubich versus Michael Rubich regarding the custody of their son, one Carl Rubich, age 12. The defendant, 
alleges, and by documentary proof establishes, that the plaintiff accepted a financial settlement in return for relinquishing the rights of the son's custody. The plaintiff, in turn, states this agreement is not a legal binding, and that her son needs her love and protection because of the father's desertion of the boy to the cares of a professional nurse. I am possibly going to be guilty of setting a precedent in judicial procedure by taking the course I had decided upon. And ma'am, please come forward. Now I'm going to ask you a most serious question. Consider it carefully, or your answer shall be the court's decision. The state gives you the privilege of choosing either of your parents or a suitable substitute as your legal custodian and guardian. What is your answer? Why, I choose my grandfather, Adolf Griggs. But this is ridiculous. I should have feel that group is. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Hey, Mr. Greig, do you accept the appointment of this court as the custodian of your grandson? Or have you any objection? Objection? Your Honor, I rejoice in the greatest gift an old man could possibly get. The devotion of his grandson. Please, Your Honor, could you excuse me now? I must practice my music because tonight I play with my grandfather's old symphony orchestra. You are both dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Mary? She's going to play the concert after all. <laughs> yes, I'm going to get the dinner ready. <laughs> no, 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 no dinner. She plays better on an empty stomach. No. <laughs> <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> yes. Now you have a chance. Hold it. What we can do. All right, then. 